Hey, welcome to another edition of Last Minute Tim. Anyway, uh, I'm trying to get this video up to you guys and get it up and out of here. This is uh, something we put together. I'm, I'm currently not on my boat. I'm working over to help out everybody in the current situation. So I've gone on to another boat, it's another 3,000, and you'll see us picking up a barge from Charleston, South Carolina, and bringing it up to Norfolk, Virginia. So hope you like it. All right, be safe out there. So, here's a chart of uh, Charleston Harbor. And this is what they call Shipyard Creek. This is where our video starts, where we pick up a barge here. We come out here, and you'll see they were doing some dredging right in this area, right over here. So we had to add the dredge move, and then we come out here, and we come down around here like this. This is where the cruise sh ships come, and uh, so if you've been into Charleston the cruise ship area, you'll be able to see them. Uh, this is where you're familiar with. Now normally we'd go out here like this, but uh, there was some inbound traffic, so we took this south channel here, where we came down here, came up here, and then we remade tow so we got off of the being alongside the barge and we picked it up on the wire here and went outbound this way and I'll show you the next this is where we came out of Charleston right here we came all the way out here like this and then we headed up hugging the coast because the wind was coming off this way and we came up here came around by Cape Fear came by Cape Lookout then we came up here to Diamond Shoal, Cape Hatteras, and uh, we had to time it just right because the wind was getting really nasty. And luckily, we were able to just make it around the corner before the wind. The wind was coming this way. Eventually, it swung around this way like this, and it was going to calling for really nasty weather. We just came around the corner just in time. And what happens is when the wind blows this way, there isn't enough fetch, what we call fetch. In other words, as the seas the wind builds on the seas, if it has to hold it in, it can build up some big waves, but if it comes off the beach here, it has to start here and start building the big waves that way. And here, here's the approach bay, came up here, came around Cape Henry, came through the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with, came through here, and what's interesting about this channel is that if you're going into Norfolk, um, you would think that you stay between the buoys. Those are usually reserved for deep draft vessels like aircraft carriers and tankers and this like container ships. We use the reserve channel. So in other words, we'd come out, come through this way like this. And then uh, when we come out, we come out the other side and just go on the outside like that. It looks tight here, but this is a very big chart, so there's plenty of room to do that. And then, as we come over here to Old Point Comfort, these right here are what they call the submarine buoys. And I don't know why they've always called them the submarine buoys. I'm sure there's somebody out there, one of you guys that knows, but if you know what the history of why we call these the submarine buoys, please comment and tell me how, why that is. But anyway, we go up here and I'm going to show you the next chart. Actually, you know what? I grabbed the wrong chart, but that's all right. We remade tow over there. We got in push gear, and you'll start seeing us. That's where the, once we get in push gear, that's where the video starts. It was rainy. We come up through here by Craney Island, come around here by the degaussing yard, come up here. Those that are familiar with Northfoot know all about this. We come up through here, and, uh, all the way up. We go right in there. <laughs> that's what I was looking for. So that's what you're going to see us do. It was a beautiful morning as we left uh, Shipyard Creek in Charleston. Took the barge off here, spun it around. We had to call ahead to the dredge. There's a dredge that's digging up all the silt to keep the channel from filling in. He had to separate from where the stuff is there on the left, where he is on the right over here. You'll see him as we go by. He's got little assist tubs holding him off there.
but now we go over and uh, kind of enter into the main shipping channel of Charleston. And we're headed outbound at this point. Unlike the mistake I made pointing out the charts, we actually take the main shipping channel. We did not go around the backside of Drum Island. I don't know what I was thinking when I did that. But I was concerned more about the charts falling. <laughs> but this is where we're getting to where if you guys, uh, if any of you had taken a cruise that had either stopped in Charleston or departed or sailed from Charleston. It'd be right here on the right hand side. And you can see up here there's a well there's a ship coming in on the left hand side of the screen there. And he's coming down the main channel so that's what gave us the idea to take the south channel and give the whole channel to him. So we headed down here, we had some time to kill him. There was someone else behind him too, so we figured we'd let all the big boys go through and stay out of everyone's way before we broke down and put her on the wire. I have to apologize to you guys for the recording here. I have this super cool voiceover mic, uh, but I've left it up on my boat. I couldn't bring everything with me. So we're just using this silly little microphone on the laptop, so bear with me. Now we're bringing her into the anchorage now. I've seen a slowdown. So we're what we're doing is we're pointing the stern of the barge, which is what we call the the working bow, because however the tug is is in relationship to the barge. But we're gonna put the actual stern of the barge or the working bow of the barge up into the wind and the tide, and then we're gonna break down get on the wire and luckily it all works out so that the barge is facing right out the channel anyway. Headline go here. Using the boat to pull the line out. Sometimes it's a, it's a long line it gets stuck. So just use the boat to pull it around. So this is after we got her strung out. Day was beautiful. And many people will tell you that it's really hard to film sea conditions because it always looks nice out there. It's not always as nice as it looks. Well, anyway, this is an example of that right here. It looks flat calm out there. But there's actually about a four foot heave, what we call a heave, a ground swell there. You can kind of see how the boat is pushing against the waves as I walk around here. We'd have a nice clear wake if the water was flat calm, but that wasn't the case. Now some people see the water on the back deck and they get all freaked out. Actually for a tug that's very common. You want the tug to be just as heavy as you can and let the seas almost roll over the top of it. There are some days out here I pinch myself and uh, can't believe I'm getting paid to do this.
I slowed this down a little bit, and once again, you guys are have been with me since the beginning here, realize that there's a learning curve on all of this. I didn't realize I was shooting at 60 frames a second, but apparently my camera has the function of being able to go at uh, 240 frames a second. So I assure you the next slow motion I have won't be so jerky as this. I'll just be the only jerky in the video. That's the hope. I thought that was kind of fun to show you that. I can say it looks flat calm, but if you remember, that bow is probably a good 9, 12 feet, maybe 9 or 11 feet, something like that, off the water. So, uh, yeah, the water looks flat calm, but there's a good heave on there. Okay, so now we've got to Norfolk and uh, we got into the anchorage and made up in push gear. As you can see, it was rainy and kind of miserable out. But as is often the case, time and tide wait for no man. Weather seems to never stick around too long either. So usually it's a uh, nice weather that takes off but in this case you'll see later on it clears right up and becomes a beautiful day but anyway right now we're coming into Norfolk and what's special about Norfolk is that they say I've been told it's the largest naval base in the world so right now we're going by the carrier piers on the left hand side I should have counted how many carriers I saw but so sometimes it's hard to see you see a bunch of big aircraft carriers and you see other ones that look a little smaller and i guess they're some sort of a assault ship or something like that where they it's not a full con it's not a full aircraft carrier it's got all kinds of landing craft on it and all kinds of other stuff and then it also has a little deck for helicopters and i guess the short takeoff and landing planes i guess but anyway we keep moving. As you can see, the camera is moving around because there still is a little bit of bump there. meeting a outbound container ship here. It's interesting to see the civilian shipping work right alongside the Navy shipping as well. And as big and bad as Norfolk is, just on the other side is also Newport News, which is where they build aircraft carriers, submarines, and all kinds of stuff, so pretty amazing. Passing the uh, coal piers. If you, I should have showed you on the chart, but there's a million train tracks that all come down this way, so you can bring all kinds of stuff to all these different uh, docks over here. Now we just passed something there on the on the right. I don't know if you want to back up or not, but there's something that's really kind of cool. It's called a degaussing yard. At least I don't know. I think it's cool. Apparently, every ferrous metal on the planet has its own magnetic signature, kind of like a fingerprint. So if you had a big naval ship or submarine or something like that, and it had its own magnetic fingerprint, Something could go by and figure out what it is by that magnetic anomaly. So I guess they run a bunch of wires, and kind of. I don't think they take the magnetic field out of the the hulls of the ships, 
but I think they, they minimize it or change it or make it all the same. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure how it works, but I always thought that was very interesting. But anyway, now we're coming into Norfolk and in Harbor Reach here. I'm kind of panning on the wrong side. I really should have panned the other side, but the other side has a water side, I think. They call it water side there. And as we go here, you can see things like on the left, right, there's still this naval operations going on all the time. I think this is actually a private yard that works on Navy stuff, but I could be wrong. Maybe they're just subcontracting. I'm not exactly sure. Then the old hammerhead crane, I don't know if they use it anymore, but that's been around for ages, and you'll hear guys making security calls saying they're coming by the hammerhead that's there on the right. As you can see, the clouds have parted. Wind has blown out all these clouds. And we're looking good as we come up to the Beltway Bridge. It's the railroad bridge that goes up. People that have been here in the Norfolk Southern Branch might remember the Jordan Lift Bridge. Well, that's no longer. They put the, now it's just the Jordan Fix Bridge. They put that in right there. And, we don't have to wait for that thing to open up anymore, which is kind of cool. And we're coming up to Paradise Creek on the right-hand side. This is where we're going to put the barge. This ship on the left-hand side is actually loading with wood pellets. That's kind of interesting. Now this barge has a bow thruster. I've never used one before. So uh, you can see the white stuff, the foam over there. That's all pushing over there. Push over and get to use the bow thruster. So that's it. That was us coming in. Hope you liked it. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't, maybe consider subscribing. Too cool. Take care.